So let's go into our third scenario, and this is a sports scenario. So uh, you've seen how a lot of these things operate, so I'm going to spend more time on just what's available in sports. And uh, so let's we have our football team going on here. And up in the top, I've already put in a um, source, and let me go over in Tyler Pro Live to that source location, the game source. And uh, we have these different tools that we can work with here. So let's see. Let's bring that there. And so uh, let's say we can go into this one title right here and uh, go into this game. And you can see how it animates in. There's a lot of rich style. And if I let's just actually go through some of the sports templates that are available. So in Titler Pro Live 2 Advance, that comes with a category of templates called the Sports Collection. So if we go into the Sports Collection, we can really riff through a lot of these and you know, see what they're all about. So I'm going to do... Uh, uh, the baseball score up here, um, maybe the uh, break score. Break score is where you have like team versus team, and and uh, you know the game's not on right now, or it's paused, or like you know halftime, what have you. Uh, you can have a bug, so let's say a bug of your brand or maybe your sponsor coming in, uh, and then this carrot design also has a football design. We also have a lower third design. That's coming in. So you can see there's a lot of different templates. In fact, each of these um, styles, so carrot we're looking at right now, has a baseball score, a break score, a bug, a football score, a lower third, a soccer score, um, a uh, stat graphic. If we bring that in, you can see uh, what the stat graphic is. So like, let's say you put players' names on the left and you put their jerseys on the right or whatever you want to do with that stat score. Um, and then we got a tennis, volleyball. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> right. Jacob's wondering if you have rugby. <laughs> well, we don't have a special design rugby, but you can tweak whatever you want to, to make it rugby. And, and you know what? If we get enough interest, we're going to do it. All right. So, uh, yeah. So uh, just to give you a little, little survey of some of the styles we have here, here's one style uh, that is more like this 2D kind of look. And like if, uh, if we dragged and dropped this into uh, our playlist here, you can see what's happening with this, um, this graphic. So you have all these variables opened. So you have line one left, line two left, line three left. You got all these happening here. We have header left, header right. So if I did header left and did, you know, uh, player enter, now you see the player happening up there. Uh, we have our image. Uh, maybe it's our sponsor. So maybe we go in here and say, you know what? Our local team is sponsored by Taco Bell. <laughs> so, right? <laughs> um, and maybe there's a fit mode, a fill mode, or maybe you want to fit it in so you really see the whole logo there. Um, and then we can go down further and say, you know what? The, the visitor color is not really red. It's more of like a, I don't know, an orange maybe. Or an orange look, okay. And the home color uh, is definitely... Uh, Definitely a blue or a red or, or whatever you want to call it. So you click OK. And then um, we have color number one and color number two, which are just part of the template. Uh, so let's say we want to be all serious and go black. Mm -hmm. So go black and, and white. There we go. We'll whiten it up just a little bit more. So you can see these templates re really bring in a lot of customization. That looks nothing like this anymore. <laughs> right. right you can completely customize it to the home team exactly so uh you can see just kind of how these things work out so I, i'm gonna ditch this uh ditch this one yes delete and uh so now uh let's go into we, again we can control it from the wirecast uh side bring that graphic out we could bring in uh the uh the game and, and let's say let's say right here let's let's take that out let's say this um this element right here is just a little too, a little too small or a little too large. Actually, in the very in the um, preview area up here, we can actually move things around. Let's say we want to, you know, bring this to the top of the screen, and so uh, you know we can make that uh, go live right now. Let's see. Uh, we want to make that live. Go live. Oh, we lost them. Um, but or you know, bring it to the bottom of the screen or something like that. 
That's cool. So, very similar to Wirecast preview window. We can just click, drag, move, re readjust. That's that's very useful and helpful for working quickly. Exactly. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's bring in um, uh, a score. Let's see. Let's see. We'll auto out. So right here we have this score coming in. And let's say we want to drive this score. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into view and go to the scoreboard tool. So here's the scoreboard tool. And the great thing is, is that it has a clock happening. If I click this clock right here, you see the clock's counting down in the screen. Uh, if I had another clock, let's maybe a shot clock for you know uh, basketball or what have you, I have this other clock I can drive. And you can see it's counting down right there in the main screen. Uh, if I have the need for them to both be linked at the same time, uh, I can click right here and they're both linked. A lot of flexibility. Um, clock one and clock two are simply the name variables that you give those pieces of text and all of a sudden they get associated with the clock. So remember in the object tab where we typed in like new text, right, as right, the label? Right. We would type in clock one and that would start driving the numbers of that piece of text in the design. Uh, we have uh, the digit count, how many digits you have, uh, total time. You can count up. You can reset at the end. You can hide it when not running. So if we did, uh, let's say, the uh, clock number two, maybe it's a power play, for example. Hide when not running. So see, it's no longer in the design. But then when we go to play, it appears. And then we pause. It hides again. Uh, so you know, a lot of great things you can do there. Now, this, of course, is the home score visitor score. Uh, you can increment the scores really easily. Let's say you accidentally incremented a little too far. You didn't want to give them 15 points. You wanted to give them 14 points. Well, you can type a new value in and then hit enter, and that new value shoots right out there. So the great thing about the scoreboard tool is that everything you do here is just automatically going live as soon as you hit enter in that tool. So, you know, visitor score, we want to give them seven, <laughs> enter, uh, or use the increment numbers to do that. Now, there's a lot of variables in this template, as I was showing you, right? Uh, there's the visitor logo, the home logo, the visitor name, the home name. Um, you don't want to be looking at all those things. You wouldn't want to work with this interface just for the clock and then run over this other fit, other interface for possession and things like that, right? Right, right. Yep. So, um, exactly. So the great thing is, is you can promote variables from the template. So let's click this right here, and here's all the variables from the template we're working on. So I don't care about the image. We already know it's Taco Bell or what have you, right? I'm not going to be changing the visit and home names during the game or their logos, uh, but I do want to mess with period, possession, timeouts, and I don't want to do the colors right now. So I'm going to click OK. Now we've promoted these variables into this tool. So I could actually hide the Tyler Pro Live interface, and let's say, you know what? I, I'm sitting at my computer, and all I'm concerned about is driving that scoreboard correctly. That's cool. So, yeah, so um, you know we can uh, pick what possession's happening here, reduce by a timeout. Um, it, that, you know, it's it's uh, you know first and down money. Yeah, uh, and down enter, and now I have the text right here in the scoreboard. So uh, we can be driving the clocks and everything that can be done from the scoreboard tool. So it's very versatile. And the great thing is, is that you get to make up any variable you want. <laughs> right. When do you? Where do you push uh, the changes? Is there a refresh button in this console, or when you're using the scoreboard tool? When I type, you know, second and down, and hit enter, that's when it goes. Uh, all at once. Right. Got it. Um, yeah, a lot of you're generating a lot of questions here in the chat um, about <laughs> okay. this, so that's very cool. I think people are pretty excited about this. Well, uh, let's so, go to some of the questions then. Yeah, so um, let's start with one. This is a good one for everyone to know. How much CPU usage does Tyler Pro take up? Do you have any minimum specs recommended to run this type of stuff? Uh, we do have some minimum specifications, and it's not really CPU oriented, actually. Um, it has a lot to do with your graphics card. This is a 3D. Uh, graphics application. So uh, I, we do recommend that you have a decent graphics card in the tool that you're using. Um, like uh, we do work with Intel integrated graphics, um, and that'll get you by. But the the richer graphics you do, um, we uh, it's a uh, forty forty five hundred and above Intel HD forty five hundred and above. Um, but uh, it is really recommended that you have a dedicated graphics solution, like an NVIDIA or an AMD. 
Um, and uh, depending on how heavy the graphics you're doing, um, we would recommend um, a, a whole you know gig of, of of video RAM for that graphics card. So that's kind of a, that's a that's a component that that really is important to you know fluid fluid work with Tyler Pro Live. That makes sense. I mean, and, uh, it, and that was actually ties into a couple other questions that people had was, was there a model you recommended of video cards? I mean, I, I typically go say, you know, get, you know, an NVIDIA, uh, GeForce class card or a Radeon class card made in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try to get, uh, one with at least a gig of video RAM and that generally gets people, um, one that's powerful enough to do most of the things they ask it to do but of course yeah. it depends on how many displays you're driving and just how much how complicated your effects are how many layers and composites you 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 throw in there so um yeah and, but, and to be very clear we're, we're not talking about industrial grade graphics cards right by any means right we're talking grade. about a, a fun gaming card totally yeah. <laughs> right. yeah you know for a couple hundred bucks um you should yeah. be pretty well set with a with one that um can handle just about everything we're throwing at it um, so that's a great question. And actually, uh, everything is GPU accelerated, right? That's right. That's great. Um, that one came from Scott. Um, another question, this kind of goes from Stanley. He's actually, do you have swimming graphics? Um, I'll let you answer that. You know, we, we have not shipped um, some swimming templates, uh, but if you get the Tyler Pro Live 2 Advance, uh, you can modify any of these templates to uh, do swimming yourself. Um, and actually a piece that we kind of ran out of time. One thing I didn't do is I didn't bring import a PSD file. Um, you can, uh, it, let, let's say you've already been doing sports for a while and you've do, been doing still sports, you know, cause often that's been the offerings that are available for Wirecast customers, right? Just mm -hmm. a still graphic popping up. Right, right. Um, and let's say you have a, a Photoshop document of your graphic that was like maybe your nice background. You can import that into title designer and use that as your background material. You could even slice it up into different uh, Photoshop layers and animate them independently. So, um, you know, there's a really, really powerful, uh, powerful way that I have to show you actually. All right, it's yeah, why don't you show us? That's pretty yeah. cool. I mean, you've yeah. got a Photoshop file. I mean, everyone's familiar. That's kind of your standard, uh, you know, graphics editor. Everyone needs to kind of create their images in. So if you can just pull that in with the layers and animate those independently, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's go into, let's say, um, where did I have? I think I had a folder that just had text. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to drag and drop this down. And see all this text right here? So this is actually, this is actually straight from Harvard. <laughs> G-Town versus Harvard, and there's a couple scores here, and we're working with those guys. Nice. Um, and we'll go into Title Designer. So you see all those elements right there? Mm -hmm. In fact, I have um, kind of incorporated all these different timeouts visitor score all into a group so there's groups in here didn't want to get into the the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. but um let's go ahead and go file import psd and we'll go to our folder here and let's see let's do this one i think is the right one keep layers in one paragraph or import each layer as a separate let's keep it all as one paragraph all right so here we go here is uh, a background that, if I size it down a little bit and kind of line it up with my text in front, right? Mm -hmm. Use my alt and arrows, scoot things around. I think I need to size it down just a little bit more. Lesson of a demo artist. Remember your values. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> All right, you get you, you I, uh, get the point here, right? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, fine. So you got that. Let's say we have that there, and this is this is our uh, background, right? Let's go into the library, and we could go into some of our transitions. In fact, we have additional uh, transition collections called fluid and kinetic motion packs um, and and so you could use some fun things there like uh, a swinging text maybe and I could just hover over some of the swinging text and let's see bottoms up or let's say um, flourish letters so I can drag and drop this down and look what happens see how these different 
yeah. panels come into place? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason is, is because on this PSD layer, I have these different layers of you know, part of that PSD. I broke it up in, P in Photoshop before I brought it in. Mm -hmm. So each of these acts like a different letter getting its own animation. So if I didn't use a swing text, maybe I'll pick something a little more obvious. Let's go into our transitions, f infinity, let's say. And um, we'll use uh, letter by letter. There we go. Go ahead and drag that down. Maybe shorten our transition a little bit. And so now kind of from the different distance. They all distance, pop in, right? Right, they all pop in, right? Nice. And that, and that was all a single Photoshop file. That's all a single Photoshop file with different layers in it. That's great. I had another question you know, just from what I'm watching is what would you say, you know, the learning curve is on this? Like how long do you feel it takes people to get comfortable with the tools that you've shown today? What I would say is that um, we keep getting feedback of people being surprised at how uh, little effort it was to get going. So I think, I think everyone out there, and this is something that we really have to work against with tutorials and things like that. People just assume that, gra that graphics applications that look cool are going to be hard. Right. They just assume that. And um, the reality is, is like, no, you can get something going really easy. Um, and you just drag and drop a template, type some text, and you're good to go. Uh, so, um, it, you know, all, all things said, we do keep getting feedback that people are surprised at the level of accessibility that there is. Uh, but then later on, they're surprised at the power that they're able to do. Yeah, I think that you showed both there very nicely that you've got kind of quick access tools quick um, to keep things simple and that people can even customize how many variables and things they want to actually show up so they don't have to overwhelm themselves with too many things to change um, and then once they kind of get their workflow down you know they can streamline it to what they need and not and not worry about the rest but then if they want that power it's going to be there uh, you know just in a sub menu so that's pretty cool. Well, um, let's grab a few more questions. So Travis, first question for you comes from Nevin, and he's wondering, can you automate scoreboard data from an in-venue board, uh, like a Dactronic scoreboard or something? Right. Um, I, currently today, uh, you're not able to. However, uh, that is close on the heels. So it's in our roadmap. We're working with uh, a number of technologies that that uh, source that data. And so be looking out for news coming out of, uh, out of New Blue uh, when we hook up to some of these systems that does bring that scoreboard information in remotely. All right, next question comes from Ben, and he's wondering, can variables be fed with external data sources? So via an API or a text file or a JSON file? And uh, that's actually another form of the same question, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you know how we had the uh, the scoreboard tool? Uh, we we created that really as an input. So it is generating data and forwarding it to variable fields, and those then the variable fields get rendered in the in the design. So in the in the same way that we are working towards having some scoreboard connections, we're also working towards uh, other offerings as well. So be looking out for, for example, you know, a Twitter feed input you know be, be looking out for um you know just other kinds of inputs of that nature so uh what we do want to know though is like these are excellent questions we want to know what kind of inputs are you guys looking for and so we can so we can help prioritize our efforts uh to get the most popular inputs uh enabled great uh this one comes from mark he's wondering can the scoreboard or the score be adjusted by keyboard shortcuts kind of like we have with the uh, wirecast scoreboards um that's an excellent thing that we should do. Email me. <laughs> tell me what short, scoreboard shortcuts you want, and we'll get that rolled right in. Nice, nice. All right. Good question, Mark. Uh, do people need to buy the expansion packs or the template packs to get certain sports? Um, no. If you buy the Title of Pro Live 2 Advance, which has the scoreboard tool, it has the sports collection inside it. So those sports that I was mentioning are included. And currently, how many sports are you guys covering? Uh, we, that's an excellent question. Let me look really quick. Uh, so once again, we have uh, basketball, we have football, we have soccer, we have um, tennis, volleyball, and those are the sports that we currently have. 
Okay. Now that's that said, uh, we want to hear from you guys. What are the sports that um, you know that need to be covered, and you know we can we can move forward with you know developing scores for that, uh, working together with you. So this one comes from uh, um, Brian, and he's wondering his co- he's saying his common sources uh, are that he would like to see are Twitter, MySQL database, XML. And, um, and an XML flat file from Excel. So those are types of t- sources he'd like to see inputted. Are, are there any those types of external file formats that are currently taking in, or are you still just looking at different ones to consider? Uh, uh, we're looking at different ones to consider. The one that is actually already available in the title of Pro Live Ultimate product that I, I mentioned uh, earlier in the slides um, is CSV. CSV so, file, got it. Yeah, so uh, you can actually, the playlist that we've been developing here, you can export that playlist as a CSV file, and then that CSV is referencing what template's being used, what are the variables. And then uh, if you re-import or connect that CSV file, you can actually have someone at a different computer on your same network be driving data in that CSV file, and that will automatically update your titles and your playlist. Uh, so that's a feature of the Tyler Pro Live 2 Ultimate. Um, and uh, also part of Tyler Pro Live 2 Ultimate is that remote work. So you could actually have Tyler Pro Live on another machine on, that net, on the network sending a source into Wirecast. So um, instead of picking the uh, sources uh, Tyler Pro Live 2, you'd pick Tyler Pro Live Receiver. Ah, okay. It's under sources, mm-hmm. and that's enabled in Tyler Pro Live 2 Ultimate. Uh, and then that's basically a remote connection. And these are two good questions. So the first one that I saw was, can you export builds or templates or titles from one machine to another? So let's say you have two Tyler Pro Live owners and they want to share some stuff that they've created. Yes, you can go into the Tyler Pro Live interface and the top file menu is you can save as, uh, save a playlist or save a template. Um, and that's available at the Tyler Pro Live to standard level or above. Standard level or above. And then you could email that or put it on flash drive, and then someone else can load that in by opening it? That's correct. Cool. Uh, one, one thing to note, a, a nice convenience, is in Title Designer, there's actually a package project option. Mm-hmm. And that grabs the font you used, it grabs the textures you used, and the 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 project file, and all zips it up together. So oh, that makes nice. it more more yeah. convenient to know that you have all the assets you need. Right, because sometimes you'll get uh, you'll design something on one system and go to another, and then the system will be like, I don't have that font. I'm gonna render right. it in you know Helvetica new, and you're like, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I want. It was supposed to be impact. Ex- yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So it's a file menu. It's an export package, import package. Right. Yeah. Cool. Last question: replays. Can you show us a replay real fast and how you might do a replay in Tyler Pro? Uh, I'm well. We just make a graphic to go on top of your replay. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. We don't control the video ourselves. Okay. So right. So um, we so would you, be the graphic that you would want on top of your replay. Right. right? So you have um, basically created a great way to create animated replay titles in the, using Wirecast already. Wirecast Pro's built-in replay tool. Yeah, That's you, great. I remember in the um, the lecture, or excuse me, the the panel segment mm-hmm. where I associated lower thirds with the different cameras. Yeah. Yeah, right. You can just pop them in there. That's very cool. That's a cool workflow. So maybe we'll cover that another time. I would love to see that as well. Um, So Travis, thank you so much for your time today. It was great. And thanks so much again for being with us, everyone. We appreciate you coming out today, learning about our cool partner, New Blue Effects, and everything that they're doing and the types of things you can use uh, with Wirecast to take your production to a professional level. We do know that there are some uh, professional sports broadcasters out there using these tools to make you know online broadcasts look professional in every way. So thanks again for um, showing this to us, Travis. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Maybe we can do another one in the future. That would be excellent. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.